Hey, Dr. Daniel here, and I want to talk about autoimmunity clinical considerations. Now, when we talk about autoimmunity, there's a lot of things to think about. Uh, it's very complex. Unfortunately, there's a lot of doctors out there that just try to simplify it by dishing out uh, immunosuppressants. There's a number of different products on the market uh, that, of course, you could get a prescription for in order to suppress your immune system, which is typically the conventional answer for autoimmunity. Let's just suppress your immune system to keep your immune system from attacking your own body. Uh, because of course, autoimmunity is in fact that, right? It's when your immune system decides to attack your own tissues. Uh, but that said, you know, obviously suppressing your immune system is not a good long-term plan, or at least if that's the plan you're on, um, you might want to reconsider because that never is going to end up very well for somebody uh, if they're doing this long-term. Again, suppressing your immune system is just not a good idea, especially in a pandemic. Now, first of all, we need to identify undiagnosed autoimmunity. Of course, a lot of times when somebody gets an initial diagnosis, which if you don't know this on average, it can be anywhere from 10 to 14 years, depending on the reference that you're looking at to get an actual diagnosis. But that's not where you should end. So getting an initial diagnosis, you know, if somebody knows that they've got Hashimoto's thyroiditis, if somebody knows that they have multiple sclerosis, if they have rheumatoid arthritis, if they have celiac disease, these are all autoimmune conditions, pernicious anemia. There's a number of different autoimmune conditions that's not it. You should also ask where else are there other autoimmune reactions that are occurring? Because generally speaking, if your immune system is attacking a part of your body and that is showing up because of a particular biomarker, there's a good chance that your immune system is also attacking other parts. It's not just specific to one particular organ. So again, very important to go back and ask the question, where else is my autoimmunity occurring? Now, the second uh, factor is gonna be to identify the actual stage of autoimmunity. There is what you would call silent autoimmunity, where individuals' immune system is actually attacking their body, but they don't have any symptoms, so therefore they're typically not gonna you know, get the right type of testing done because they're asymptomatic. For me, when somebody comes to me, regardless of whether or not I think they have autoimmunity, I will test for this because I don't want to wait for symptoms to show up. We wanna be proactive. So of course, you have autoimmune reactivity when you do see levels of activity that are showing up, uh, antibody testing that you do, you're able to determine that you're in a reactive state. And then there's autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is full-fledged disease where the organ could be completely destroyed. And um, of course, in that situation, depending on uh, how bad things are, you're gonna have to make some bit, pretty big decisions with respect to how you manage that moving forward. Uh, there's also a, a remission, which ultimately the goal of autoimmunity is to get your body into remission, meaning that your, your immune system's not reacting or attacking you know, different tissues. Now, part of figuring out what is contributing to the autoimmune reactivity is identifying triggers. And there's a number of different triggers that you want to pay attention to. And we're, we can organize these triggers into categories. So the first one um, could be your lifestyle triggers. So are you getting enough sleep? Are you getting enough exercise? Or sometimes people are getting too much exercise. So it could be not getting enough physical activity or getting too much. Same thing with sleep. You're not getting enough sleep or you're getting too much. Toxic relationships. Do you have healthy relationships? Do you have a sense of community? Um, what's the relationship like with yourself? All of these things are known to actually exacerbate or trigger autoimmunity. Uh, dietary triggers, and this is probably where most people should start uh, aside from lifestyle factors. Obviously, we got to optimize our sleep, our physical activity, our, our relationships. But if there is a big win that anybody could have, uh, and again, if I'm talking about general autoimmunity, um, we need to consider avoiding or reducing gluten, nightshades, lectins, which are basically proteins that are found in abundance in legumes, nuts, and seeds. There's also cross-reactive foods. What are cross-reactive foods? Well, cross-reactive foods would be foods that, let's say, cross-react with gluten, where you're not necessarily consuming gluten, you're not consuming wheat, but there are other foods that have very similar chemical structures and so therefore cross-react. Uh, amaranth, buckwheat, soy, 
um, potatoes, right? These are all cross-reactive. And typically when people follow gluten-free diets, unfortunately, the foods they're eating are actually cross-reactive. So uh, again, identifying whether that's occurring or not. And then identifying insulin surges or glucose dysregulation, which is a big one that could uh, contribute to autoimmunity as well, or at least flare-ups. You also have uh, chemical triggers that could be contributing to this. Uh, and keep in mind that, you know, I don't have autoimmunity, but if I'm with somebody that does and we walk into a building and in that building there's chemicals or uh, pollutants, maybe it does nothing to my body, my body can handle it, but for an autoimmune patient, because their immune system is already taxed, uh, certain pollutants, certain toxins, chemicals, they can react to it. And this, of course, can cause, again, uh, autoimmunity or contribute to exacerbation of it. And then impaired, uh, impaired biotransformation, which is basically um, liver uh, function or detoxification impairment, right? Uh, and a lot of these things you can actually pick up on standard blood chemistry testing if you know what you're doing. Uh, you also want to identify for uh, different antigens, which would basically be compounds that are produced from different types of infections. These infections could be viral, they could be bacterial, they could be parasitic and or mold. It could be one, it could be a combination of all of these. Uh, some of the more notorious viruses um, that are, you know, or viruses that are notorious for causing autoimmunity would include cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, and herpes simplex viruses. Uh, certainly, you know, a lot of us in the population have been exposed to these viruses. Your, your body gets exposed to it, you get over it, and then that's it. But for some people, they could have chronic load, viral load of these infections, meaning it's still activating uh, and causing their immune system to become dysfunctional. Uh, certainly, Epstein-Barr virus and cytomegalovirus are the two most common, but recently, uh, SARS-CoV-2 has become implicated in it. And then even the spike protein that is now being delivered from the vaccines uh, is implicated for being uh, one of these components or triggers. You also have bacterial infections, uh, parasites, like I said, and then molds. And then you have um, your immune barriers. How healthy are your immune barriers? Uh, what are the immune barriers? Where you've got your gut barrier, the intestinal lining. Is that healthy? Is there inflammation there? Do you have leaky gut? Um, you know, is there infiltration into the intestinal wall that's causing problems? You've got your lung barrier, your pulmonary cells. Um, these, when you breathe air in, obviously our, our lungs are there to protect us, right? As you inhale things, it's a lining of protection. And if you have dysfunctions there, just like you can have leaky gut, you can have leaky lungs. Well, that's something that can contribute to, to issues. You have the nasopharynx barrier, so the nose and the throat as it comes down. This is mucus lining, and if there's dysfunctions there, that, of course, is going to impact your immune system in a negative way. And then you've got the blood-brain barrier. Again, if there's dysfunctions, uh, if there's things that you're ingesting, exposing yourself to, uh, that can cause your body to not only create antibodies that go and attack these tissues, uh, but the chemical exposure, the food exposure, or the antigen exposure from viruses, bacteria, parasites, these can all contribute to dysfunctions within these barriers. You also have um, the, the mechanisms that we know that can improve immune tolerance. So it's important to distinguish between these different components. Um, if we identify a component that's activating your immune system, we should work on down-regulating it. And here's where it can get a little tricky because sometimes there's compounds that people are taking because they believe it's good for their immune system. Let's say turmeric or curcumin, which is very potent and very powerful for our immune system. But in some autoimmune patients, it could actually be toxic. It could be driving up, up-regulating their immune system when we're trying to actually calm things down. Uh, so we've got to be careful with some of these compounds that are out there that are natural and healthy. You really have to understand that some of these could actually be adding uh, fuel to the fire, right, of inflammation within your body. Uh, and then finally, there are strategies that we can discuss with respect to flare-ups. I mean, somebody could be doing everything right. They could be doing all these things right. But there could be a flare-up that shows up, and when it comes to flare-ups, it's always taking a step back and looking at your diet, your lifestyle, the supplements that you're taking. Like I said, you know, high levels of vitamin C, 
very good, but if your immune system's overactivating, you might actually be adding fuel to the fire that, that we gotta be careful with. So uh, again, I hope this video gives you some clarification. I understand it's a lot of information, but these are all the things that we really need to be thinking about if we're wanting to get a hold on our autoimmunity.